Hello. Oh god. What's up guys? It's Dabin. I'm here on my Animal Crossing island and about to have Run come over and we're going to explore my island and ask each other questions uh, sent by you guys. So yeah, Run just got the Dodo code, so she should be on her way any minute now. Well, hello, Hi. hello. Oh no. It's not, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. She's just like, I'm done with this shit. I'm out of here. Peace, guy. God. I get shy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, you can do it. Welcome to my time. island. Happy to be here. <sighs> All right. You want a little little tour yeah. of what I got going uh -huh. on? All right. So Ooh. this is the main entrance area. I kind of like leave stuff here just for people um, to oh. pick up when they come visit. That's sweet. This is the town square. I love how pink it is. All right. Follow me over here. Look at all your flowers. Oh, I like these ones. Yeah. <laughs> so I got, I got my like my favorite residence up here. Ooh. Nice and bougie on the on that high altitude, like you know. Mm-hmm. I oh. like it. Where'd you go? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm downstairs. <laughs> Wait, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I'm I'm right here. Oh, there there she is. <laughs> Isn't she so cute? She's adorable. This is awesome. Is she one of your favorites? She is. Is it because she's pink? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is my little, uh, uh, the bird scooter rentals. Nice. Apparently, uh, most of them are out right now. I mean, it's a nice day. <laughs> I got my Jen. shops over here. Wow! Uh, is that it? That's about it. Do they have a pumpkin up front of that one? Yeah, so, okay, I for totally forgot that I set this account to the Southern Hemisphere. Ooh. So, since I wanted spring, I kept going to April and I was like, how come I'm not getting any cherry blossoms? And then my Discord told me I had to switch it over to October. Because that's when spring in the Southern Hemisphere starts, apparently. That's hilarious. So, it yeah. is springtime Halloween? Yes. That's, that's <laughs> the best. Oh, the combination of everything I love. This is Mac. Uh, I'm not crazy about Mac, so... Uh, kind of creeps me out just a little bit. <laughs> Here, I got, I got a little little forest area. Ooh, 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 so pretty. All right, so for everyone watching, um, this is not my main island. I have like 300 hours logged into my first account that I started on a Switch Lite, and then I realized too late that I can't record on a Switch Lite. So this is my second island. These are so cute. How do I... Go the right direction. <laughs> go, yeah. There you go. Go on the thing. Yeah, Yay! I gotta give a big shout out to my Discord Animal Crossing channel. They, a bunch of them came and like helped me tidy up the island and gave me a bunch of cool stuff like these chairs. So shout out That's so to my Discord. Sweet. That's great. All right, these so, chairs are awesome, aren't they? So okay, I was thinking we could start with some questions over here and then migrate over to. My crib. Okay. All right. So, for Avina, Sless ask, what's your favorite dog breed? I'm going to have to say Pitbull, hands down. Pitbull, that's a good one. I have a Pitbull, and she's my whole heart. What's, what's her name? Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. She's a blue nose. <gasps> that's so cute. I've actually, I think I've seen pictures of her. She's so adorable. Yeah, I pretty much spam her constantly. <laughs> she's awesome. cuter than I am, so you know, it's just like... She's actually the only dog I've ever owned. I never had the dog before her. Really? <laughs> um, okay, question for you. Okay. Azure Fires um, yes. wants to hear about upcoming music, especially the 2021 album. Ooh. Um, yeah, I'm just working on album three right now. Um, I've been having a lot of time in the studio because of the quarantine, so that's kind of been, you know, nice creatively for me. Um, working with like a lot of friends, uh, a lot of collabs, and yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm really excited about all the songs that I've been working on, so hopefully we'll be able to give you more info in the next coming months. Alright, 
for run. Malia asks, what's your go-to boba order? <laughs> okay, um, I like never get boba. <laughs> what? What? I mean, not because I don't want to, I just don't live by one. That's, that's my reaction to that. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, I'm, I am embarrassed. All right, well, my go-to boba order, since somebody here doesn't drink boba, is uh, the taro flavor. Mm. <laughs> my favorite. All right. Um, J7228 asks, do you have any more collabs with Grant? Um, not collabs, but he is also the producer of my next solo song that's coming out next month. Ooh. So kind of. And then I guess that kind of segues into this other question that Munbro wanted to ask. Who produced the music for Better and your next solo single? Better was actually produced by Fairlane. Oh, nice. Yeah, and he's, you know, the best. He, How, how's um, the man? Yeah, for real. A real real friend and a real like encouraging support to me. Uh, he was like the first person who took an interest in my solo material and helped me get it off the ground. So I owe him a lot. That's awesome. Shout out Fairlane. Yeah, he, so he did two that are coming out on the whole EP in September and then Grant did the other two. So. Oh, nice. That's Damn, cool. super fun. How about a question for you? Yeah. Natalie wants to know, how do you write songs together and if we have any more collabs? Potentially. I mean, Run has sent me some really dope top lines, and there's one <laughs> that I've been working on uh, currently, so you Hopefully. will potentially see another Run Davin collab. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of how did we write the song together, I'm, I'm on like a I, caffeine crash right now. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it being far more collaborative than. <sighs> It sometimes is, for at least me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, like, when I was writing Wild Youth, I was, I had such like a strong vision for like what I wanted every song to be about. So I just remember like hitting you up and being like, I really wanted to like write a song about like overcoming like depression and just like, you know, something like positive to close the album out. Mm -hmm. And Ron was just like, say less, I got you, fam. <laughs> and literally... I was like, here, let me give you my entire life story. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because, like, a lot of the times when I work with um, singer-songwriters, like, there'll be a lot of back and forth being like, oh, yeah, like, I really like this part. Maybe this part could, like, change a little bit. You know, how about if you tried something else here? But mm -hmm. I just remember, like, the first thing Run sent me was basically, I'm like, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's the song, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So, yeah, it was, that was one of the most, like, satisfying collaborative experiences I think I've had. Mm-hmm. It yeah. felt very natural. Yeah, that was a good one. It was. That was a good one. That's me when you sent me the top line for, for Alive. <laughs> it wasn't a crying one. <laughs> no. Oh, I'll, yeah, a I'll crying one, too. <laughs> it's too much. It was a mix of that and this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Nikki right. also is oh, asking, yeah. what is your favorite memories when you hang out around the city after the show? It's cool Way when... Way back when. Oh, yeah, when we used to play shows about years ago. <laughs> A lot of the fun ones are kind of like when, um, you know, me and some of the other acts will like, you know, go hang out at a bar after the show and then we'll like meet some fans too. And then we'll be just be able to like hang out and like have some drinks with fans. I think those are cool moments for sure. Mm. Yeah. Shall we, shall we migrate to a different area? Mm-hmm. Do you run faster than me? Do I? <laughs> That'd be ironic. I think if you hold down, you if you hold down B, you can like sprint. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Learn new things every day. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, Brianna asks, what would you be doing for a living if it wasn't music? Mm, being miserable, probably. Uh, <laughs> I guess you can't do that for a living. Um, I used to do a lot of retail jobs. Like I'm an excellent cashier. <laughs> oh, no way. Where did yeah, you so used to work? I work the weirdest jobs. Um, usually clothing. Yeah. And there's this place in LA that sells clothes that used that were used on like TV sets and like. Ooh, that's cool. From famous shows and stuff. Um, Super cool. So it's kind of like a thrift shop, but 
I think that was the last job I had, actually. Damn. I think I've yeah. only worked one retail job and I hated it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah, just tr like trying to, especially when you have to meet like a sales quota and your like mm. boss is pressuring you to like talk to people who clearly don't want to be talked to. Or unhappy customers. Yeah, it's like you have to sell 10 watches today. And I'm like, these guys aren't looking for a watch. They're just, <laughs> I know they're just browsing. <laughs> so I'm just like, hey, do you want to watch, please? <laughs> please they're buy like, no, it. and you're like, okay. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, I didn't last too long in retail. Um, how about another question for you? Yeah. Azure Fires Bring is it. asking you, what can you tell us about Hearts on Fire? Ooh, I don't even know how they know the song title. Big surprise. <laughs> that is my collab with Mick, uh, Elenium. Ooh. And I'm super stoked on it. I have no idea when it's going to come out, but it's also with um, a vocalist that I've been wanting to work with for a long time. So it's, um, yeah, super excited for that. That's awesome. Yeah. Jay is also asking about Rings and Roses Part 2. Potentially. I mean, Connor's such a great songwriter. Um, yeah, maybe I should hit him up again. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aeon asks, what got you into this industry and how did you get past tough challenges? Um, I think it's constantly a work in progress. Um, <laughs> I've always been in music one way or another, mm -hmm. like always. I went to college in Seattle first, and uh -huh. then I was going to write theologically correct worship songs. What? And then I took... What? <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah, I was a theology awesome. major because I was like, I'm gonna write songs about God. And then I took one theology class and I was like, fuck this. And then I went to <laughs> Berkeley instead. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, for a couple semesters and then I dropped out and moved to LA. Nice. And I sort of, I would say that I wandered for a while. Yeah. Um, it, I, I knew I needed to be in music, but I didn't know my place in it. And I was right. really self conscious and I wasn't, I didn't feel like good enough to be an artist until it sort of happened organically. Right. So it's been, you know, it's been a journey and it's been hard sometimes, but feel that. whenever feel I'm that. upset, I just kind of pour it into a song and keep moving. I feel that. Hope you don't mind, I'm just like watering the lake. That's fine, I, I my shoes are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, a, uh, another question I have for you. David asks, well, I guess I kind of answered this question from my perspective, um, but how did the collab for Alive come about and what was the creative process like for it, maybe from Run's perspective? Yeah, um, and I interjected from yours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember getting the track and it was just like the first bit. Um, it wasn't like, you know, it was just the emotion of that guitar, I feel like really oh, yeah. struck me and um, a lot of the time when I write I just kind of get on the mic and just go and see what happens and see if there's anything you know salvageable from it yeah. and it felt you know like a little bit like a story um, my yeah. story and yeah. that was scary to enter into that mm -hmm. vulnerable space but um, felt really really right and then you were very much like, yes, this is the right direction. This is exactly what we need to be talking about. And that was really <laughs> affirming. But yeah, I felt like you and I were just kind of tossing it back and forth like so quickly. Mm -hmm. It was very, I don't think I've ever wrapped up a song that fast before. Yeah, and that's like, for me, it's such a good feeling when it just kind of comes to you like organically and you don't really have to like force it or like, we didn't really struggle with any part of the mm -mm. song, you know? It was like, oh, maybe the hook's not right. Like, it was just kind of mm -mm. like, yeah, it, everything is perfect the way it is, <laughs> so. Yeah, that was yeah. really nice. Yeah, that was a nice one. Okay, let's migrate. Where should we go? The beach. The beach, yeah, the beach. Um, okay, let's see. David asks, do you have something or anything that keeps you going when times are tough slash you have no motivation? I think that's always like a daily struggle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've learned a lot about myself over the last couple of years and like how to do self-care that's not 
you know, just like a generic word for it, but like actually when I feel burnt out, giving myself permission to just step away from something for a while. Yeah. Give my ears a break, give my heart a break. I Dude, go Matt, for walks you, with my dog a what lot. What do you want, to Get out of here. This is not your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got him! Very rude. <laughs> As you were um, saying. <laughs> yeah, I go for walks with my dog a lot if mm -hmm. I'm feeling like like my brain is collapsing and yeah. sometimes I also like will literally just lie on the floor and cry for a couple of hours and <laughs> I don't beat myself up about it because some days are just like that and you need a good cry you know yeah, yeah and I think it's important to know that down moods and like feeling really kind of immobilized by depression or anxiety is temporary and it will not last forever and sometimes you just need to get through it and to know that it will be better on the other side 100%. On the same um, topic of um, doing things that make you feel better, Jenny asks, what's your favorite dessert? Ooh, I am... I have a war sweet tooth. Oh my god. It's so bad. <laughs> and I also like love artificial sour candy. That's just Ooh, I love my shit. Candy. So, you're, so you're like a sweets girl. Candy yeah. and chocolates and... Not so much chocolate. Basically, no. just anything with enough citric acid to burn my tongue off. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what about you? Hmm. I actually like. Okay, wait. Actually, my favorite dessert, hands down, has to be like cheesecake. Ooh. I'm such a fucking sucker for cheesecake. God. I just know it's so bad for me, so I try not to have it too often, but. No, yeah, I don't think cheesecake is something you can have a lot of. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> you have a slice and you're good for like six months, you know? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, how about a question for you? Yeah, hit me. Bianca wants to know if you would ever do a collab with a K-pop idol slash group. Totally. Yeah, I've actually like talked to um, a few um, just kind of casually here and there just being like oh yeah i love your music it'd be really cool to like you know collab and stuff but um i haven't really like i've just been investing so much time into my own thing um that i feel like i still have so much to prove in my career so i haven't been doing like too many you know like crossover things but definitely in the future it'd be like a cool idea if you're not opposed to it at all um and shadow wants to know how did you find your own sound uh, I guess that's just from, you know, experimenting and just doing this for years, you know. You know, a lot of the time I think about music as like, especially production, when you start out, you have kind of no idea what you're doing. So you're kind of just like emulating other people, you know, like early on, like I was just like so obsessed with Electro House and like Maddion and that like Complexro kind of style kind of stuff. So I would like try to make music like like his and just kind of during that process I would pick up so many things about production along the way and then you know once I got the hang of it I was like okay maybe it's time to like um, create like an identity for myself so I kind of just went back on you know what I loved about music in the first place like I loved like the organic sounds you know like big tribal drums and like acoustic guitars real guitars and I think, it, you know, it took a while, but I feel like my last album, Wild Youth, kind of like put me in a, in a safe place where everything I made, I felt comfortable and it was like, it felt genuinely me. So I would just say, you know, it's just kind of from producing for a long time and experimenting and figuring out what you like and what you dislike about music. So, yeah. I think that kind of goes into another question, which is your inspiration for your music. Where do you draw your inspiration from damn i draw a lot of inspiration for my music just through like personal you know experiences that i go through but i also don't like limit it you know inspiration is so hard to come by sometimes that like you kind of just take it wherever it comes i remember for sure when i wrote bloom with uh, dia frampton it was literally just from like a dream I had one night and then I woke up and there was just like this melody in my head and I was like, I can't let this like slip away. So the moment I woke up, I just ran into the studio and banged it out and that song literally, I finished it in like two days. That's awesome. So, yeah. All right, what about a question for Run? This is, uh, you're, you're treading on thin ice right here, but who's your favorite artist to work with? <laughs> 
Oh, that's like the meanest question. You can't have a favorite. It's like asking who a favorite child is. I'm gonna whip out the axe for this one. Um, <laughs> seven, always been seven. <laughs> that's what I like to hear. <laughs> no, no, you could, you could answer like, I, I'm, I'm totally chill about it. I, I think there's just something really special and unique with every song I've written, with every person I've collaborated with. You know? Um, I think some of my favorite songs have yet to come out. <laughs> I'll Ooh, say that. That's cool. So yeah, to answer your question, Nick, um, it's it, her answer is Dabin. Yes, so. this is very true. <laughs> All right, shall we relocate? <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. All right, let's relocate. See, this, like everything I've shown you right now is the parts of the island that I'm okay with showing. And then where we're going right now is just awful. Like I haven't done any, like anything to it. <laughs> it just it really dies down right here. <laughs> this is basically what my whole island looks like. What is that thing over there? Well, oh, don't 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 mind him. Just this gross foul creature. Oh. oh, don't even look at me, dude. Get out of here, bro. Oh. Astrid, I don't even know. Anyways. Anyways, um, how about while we're on the move, you can answer the question. Yes. Uh, what's one of your favorite moments in your career? Oh, God. Um, okay, I think... Um, so as a Canadian, we have like the Juno Awards, which is kind of like the Canadian equivalent to the Grammys. And then when I found out that my very first album, Two Hearts, was like nominated for Best Electronic Album of the Year, that was cool, because... At the time when I made it, you know, I'm just like some kid in his mom's basement. And just to be able to get recognized like that was a special moment for me. And I think, you know, very inspiring to other people because it, it just kind of showed like you don't need like a crazy studio or like a crazy setup to like, you know, get recognized like that. So I thought that mm-hmm. was cool. And then I think uh, on this last tour with Elenium, um, you know, playing venues like Madison Square Garden, you know, I never thought, never dreamed of being able to step foot in a place like that, but, you know, playing shows there, that was a dream come true for sure. No kidding. That's yeah. fucking amazing. <laughs> Alright, well, this is my crib. Okay. Alright, let's take a step on inside. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> Thanks. Love so, the incense. Okay, so literally I've only maybe done three rooms. This is the main entrance. It's uh, so vibey. Right? And then this left I room will. over here. I did make a studio in mine. I will say that my did studio you? is pretty sick. Yeah, I got to work on that. Aww. A, a little bedroom, you know, keeping it humble. Oh, you got a nice Monstera over here. Yes. Yes, I do. Come on, Gee. My amp, and a very fancy painting. Oh wow, that is a very fancy painting. Wait, why can't I play? Can I play this? <laughs> you like my skills? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this is a really, really unique way to play guitar. Wait, here. here <laughs> Standing up from three feet away. <laughs> here's a live. I can't hear it, but I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Sometimes it feels. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so that's basically the only two rooms I worked on before this interview. But then I got this top area where we're going to finish our interview. Oh, okay. Yeah. Welcome. Ooh. I, uh, I picked up this wallpaper because like- your hair is pink. Thank you. It's and, like between two ferns kind of vibes. All the, yeah, that's what I was going for. <laughs> all right. The pink stars. Wow. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm so, very impressed. So, uh, so uh, Malia asks, what was your first concert? My f- first concert attending or performing at? <laughs> Not specified. <laughs> Maybe both. Let's hear both. My first concert I attended, I was 13 and I went to a John Mayer concert. No way. That was my first concert too. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, he's always been a huge inspiration, yeah. honestly. 
Yeah, he's, um, he's great. Just to show how you can capture literally 60,000 people with a guitar and a song with a story. Mm-hmm. And then the first performance of a concert, I've only done like four ever. <laughs> no way, really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, Gotta being a recording that. artist, it's primarily just hiding studio in my studio time. that's true that's true well we'll definitely change that when uh we all get to go back on tour yeah i yeah. i love it definitely mm-hmm. bear girls invited me to perform our song demon when he was in town locally and that was pretty oh, yeah. special that was at red rocks too right yeah he had also that was my second show ever so oh, you know damn <laughs> it's a pretty big second show ever <laughs> yeah, it's not bad it doesn't suck Spencer wants to ask you what's the best and worst things about working in your position. What do you love and hate about it? Um, okay, so I love that I'm able to do what I love for a living. I don't think I'd have it any other way. Um, but on you know with that responsibility, like it's so easy to get lazy. You know, because you're just not working like a nine to five. And it's all about, I found like this career is all about balance. You know, like sometimes you just can't beat yourself up over like not having creative days because you just can't like force creativity every single day. You know, even if you're just going in the studio just to like fuck around, like some days you just like can't do that. And it can get, it can get exhausting. And um, it'll just like, you lose the spark of, you know that joy that you have when you like first created like your beat you know so it's about just like not getting too beat like not beating yourself up over like not having creative days um another hard thing about this line of work is especially like when you're touring just like being away from like your loved ones and your homies and people you care about um, for like long periods of time that can be hard and definitely just like touring in general is is not easy you're just <laughs> sleep deprived 24 7 and having to perform and like put a smile on every day it can make can definitely be a little draining <laughs> have you enjoyed the break from it <laughs> oh, oh my god like i toured so much last year and then i moved from Canada to the U.S. to live in Denver, and I, it just felt like I was just constantly on the move last year, and like never really had a break. So this break has kind of low key been nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I am not complaining about being home. I mean, it really did suck because my tour was about to. It my tour was officially canceled four or five days before the first show. Oof. We were basically like, all ready to go, like you know the tour bus and like all the trucks were ready my team was ready and then we just like got the notice like early that week yeah so the entire tour is canceled so that kind of sucked yeah (laughs) yeah what about you what about you um best worst things yeah i'd say it's pretty similar Mm -hmm. um i think the worst part is how at least for me like how hard it was to get established and sort of make it actually viable as a job yeah um you know it's a very especially in LA it's not like cheap out here oh for sure (laughs) um and it can be really hard when you're getting to a mindset of like comparing yourself to peers or like somebody Uh, has a success and it could have been yours or it got you know stuff like that can can really damage um an ego 100% and I think that's like been a hard part for me is just learning to accept my journey is and my timing and that different from everybody else's and that's mm-hmm. fine absolutely but the best part is definitely being able to share my heart my songs and get such amazing responses from people who resonate with it or connect with it and absolutely. i think be that makes me feel really seen and hopefully makes the listeners also feel really seen and it, it's incredible and i wouldn't trade it for anything I feel like especially for, you know, like songwriters and like lyricists and vocalists, like it must be such a cool feeling when like a song really like resonates with someone and you're in a crowd and you see like thousands of people like screaming those words that like you wrote, you know? It's surreal. It's so surreal. I remember the first time that I saw somebody got uh, my lyrics tattooed on them. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> that is a You crazy like feeling. my words so much, you're going to permanently put them on your body. Like, right. there is no higher compliment, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's so crazy. So cool. Yeah. Indescribable. 
Um, so um, this is just a question for me. Do you like dabble in production at all or? Yeah, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm super competent, Yeah. but I do. Yeah, I definitely do a decent amount of production. Um, I actually do stuff for sync. Oh, that's cool. Like 100%. Yeah. Um, a decent amount of the time and you know I can make a day of demo that sounds halfway decent but nice. at least for my own stuff I knew that I lacked the ability to get it to the level that I wanted right so I guess um, tone, on that note um, Tony asks what production techniques do you use the most well I primarily work so you know as a vocal producer I think comping mm-hmm. a really really good take is honestly one of the most fun things for me to do. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's also I, so great as like a producer when I get vocals that are like perfectly comped, you know, and I like yeah. don't really have to do that much to the vocal to make it sound good since it already sounds great. That's fucking yeah, not, awesome. Not everybody knows how to work with vocals. Mm-hmm. Um, I made that mistake early on with. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like way more controlling right. about what I send out. Um, but yeah, I, I also really like working with other artists and being their vocal producers too. Right. Um, like Dia and I work a lot together now and I do all of her vocals. Which, oh, that's cool. Not all of them, but like for all the songs we've written together and that's oh, been nice. really, really fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wait, do you want to see something cool? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not as cool as I thought it'd be. I thought it was, okay, I guess it's because it's not <laughs> nighttime outside. <laughs> Is it supposed to get darker? It's supposed to get really dark <laughs> and, and super then vibey. And then pink. Yeah. Oh, well, it's still pretty vibey. I guess so. <laughs> Dude, vibes in a studio is, like, the most important thing. Oh, absolutely. I had, um, I started building, like, a studio in, in uh, the new house. Like, I live with uh, Trevor Set in the Sky, um, and we were uh, kind of building like my studio together and then for my birthday like they finished it and just like added lights added these like really cool like um floral things and it oh it's such a vibe and it's just like fun to go in there and like create in a nice space that's so important when you spend so much time in a space it's got to be the right space the vibe's (laughs) got to be on point you know like Mm Um, How about a question for you? Yeah, hit me. Eric wants to know, what was the experience of gaining fans like? Oh, it's it's so crazy. Like, I still don't really think about it too much. Like, it only really hits me at shows when... <laughs> You're right there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just getting comfy? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so crazy when, like people notice you on the street or like after a show there's like a huge line of people like just waiting to like talk to you like that never like really sinks in with me like even today um but it's it's like i'm super grateful and it's just kind of cool to like come from just being like nobody who like just kind of produced for himself like in his bedroom and I'm you know still kind of that guy but to (laughs) you know know that like my songs have like reached out to so many people and it's like affected them in such a way is a really cool feeling so I'm super super grateful for all the fans who have like you know come out to the shows and support the music support the merch it's it's a crazy feeling and you guys like definitely keep this going so yeah yeah well, it sort of is connected to this question that Jeremy has. Yeah. Um, which is, how do you feel about connections with your fans in the community, especially during the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I always try to um, communicate with the fans, like, as much as I can. Like, I'm pretty active in, you know, I have, like, a Facebook group called uh, Dab and Sanctuary, where I, like, communicate with them a lot. And um, especially since uh, the quarantine started, I restarted using Discord. And that's been, like, a really cool place to just, you know, communicate with my fans on the daily. Like, I play, you know, video games with my fans, all, like, almost every day. Um, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so it's been, it's been really cool to, like, get to know, like, more of the fan base during the quarantine. And, like, no matter, like, regardless of whether we're in a quarantine or not, like, I always think it's important to, like, never forget about your fans and, like you know put on a good impression for them because you're like they're the reason that you're able to do stuff like this so i i think Mm -hmm. it's like it's not much to just take some time out of your day to like 
talk to your fans and like you know show them that you like actually care and like give a shit about them so yeah of course um that's so what what is your favorite video game of all time oh god it see when when people ask me this question i can't pick one but there's like mm-hmm. a bundle of them um i would say final fantasy 7 on ps1 um kingdom hearts 1 and 2 yeah those those two are probably like or three games i guess are probably like the most iconic games of my childhood and the soundtracks to them like actually influenced like a lot of my like music making as well so those are super super important influential games uh to me yeah oh and uh persona 5 holy shit greatest jrpg probably in the past like five years yeah cool yeah um, all right, I got a question for you, Ron. Daisy okay, okay. asks, how emotional was it creating the Alive Acoustic? Do you think the song sounds even more personal stripped down? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely. I was tracking the first verse just, like, as a scratch. Yeah. And I started crying. Um. <laughs> I remember that one. I remember when you sent me, like, the draft vocal. I was like, all right, all aboard the fields train, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because I had been, like, a tough day yeah. to begin with. And so it just sort of happened um, to hit a little different. And mm-hmm. it's funny when you write a song in one state of mind for one time period in your life and then... You hear it again later, and right. you're like, it's it applies in an entirely different way. Right, right. You know, um, yeah. I think I, both times for alive, this one and the original, um, it's like I wrote the song I needed needed to hear, not mm-hmm. like I was there yet. Um, so I think that's yeah, it's always going to be a really emotional song for me. Oh yeah, for <laughs> personally. sure. Personally, yeah. Um, but then second verse i literally always get goosebumps me too which feels kind of <laughs> weird i'm like oh does this make me i don't know self-centered or something but oh, um not at all You're i did like, it on the live damn. stream last week and i literally gave myself goosebumps while singing it and i was like this is crazy there's That's something a, something really special 100 percent. that must be such a cool feeling yeah, it was pretty crazy. And then yeah. this is fun because there's a little something extra in it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I like, I remember for months thinking how cool it, oh, are you? you no, sorry. You heading out? That's cool. <laughs> I, I guess I'll leave too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thanks, bye. <laughs> yeah, no, I just remember thinking for months, like how cool it would be to do an alive acoustic, so... I'm super glad that like this. I mean, I guess this like quarantine has kind of been like a blessing in disguise. Because if I went on tour and I like came back, I probably don't think I would have had time to uh, work on like an acoustic EP. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really happy that we were able to do it. And yeah, I'm so excited for everybody to hear it. Yes, me too. Me too. Um, uh, how about a question for you yeah. about Alive as well? Mm-hmm. Jason asks, did you guys expect Alive to be as groundbreaking and impactful as it is? Um, man, I mean, I, I, don't, I, can, I obviously can't speak for you, but I guess I don't really, I don't really write music like with... I don't write something uh, f- like for other people, I guess, you know, like mm-hmm. I don't expect it to be groundbreaking. Like I don't expect it to change people's lives or something like that. I just kind of write stuff like based on how I'm feeling, you know, mm-hmm. and if that touches other people, like that's fucking awesome. Um, I did definitely feel that it was a special song and uh, like I really hope that it would connect with people because I think the message is very powerful behind it. And it just, like, it definitely feels good to, like, you know, after almost a year of it being out, like, it's been super impactful for a lot of my fans and a lot of years as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, I just, like, yeah, we didn't really expect it to be groundbreaking or impactful, but I'm glad that it was. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I never have any expectations. I just, you know, you just kind of throw your heart out and be like, here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's nothing like against people who like also write music to like, you know, like to try and connect with other people. There's I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's just like not 
the way that I write music, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's just different. So, yeah, I think that's always the hope you, you hope that it does, but yeah. um, I don't think there's any way to expect it. For sure. For sure. Okay. Wait, give me one second. Okay. This motherfucking jukebox. Oh God. It's just like always in the way when I'm doing this camera angle. Oh. It's rude to redecorate when you have company. Okay, well. It's okay, I won't look. <laughs> I, I legit <laughs> think it just won't let me, like, pick it up. <laughs> Do you so, want me to leave? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> we'll just have to deal with uh, this jump box. <laughs> Your studio lights are so legit. Right? Uh, shout out to my uh, Discord sanctuary members for bringing these over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they basically brought all this shit over so shout out to Aww. them <laughs> yeah well, you are very lucky i am very lucky for real um okay so i guess last question i have on the list for you is evie asks how did you two meet and what were your first impressions of each other how did we meet we were introduced by somebody right i yeah i all i remember i just knew nick worked with you and yeah it was the I super loved your vocals, and then I was like, do you have any ideas for, like, vocalists that I should hit up? And he was like, oh, you should hit up run. So I think I just yeah. hit you up one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's about how it went down. I, I mean, I'm always, like, super excited to work with new people. Um, yeah. And then and I checked out your music, and I was like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you vibed with it. <laughs> uh, we should actually hang out in person sometime, though. Yeah, we. I, I remember you were supposed to come out for my LA the show. LA show. And then you got sick or something. And no, it got canceled. Up. No, no, the, uh, the one last year. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. I was like dying yeah. um, <laughs> I remember Dia was there and she was texting me and I'm like oh I'm so sad yeah that was the first day I met Dia as well in person which is cool yeah, yeah. that was that was a bummer I get sick like all the time so really <laughs> yeah I have the really shitty immune system well hopefully when we can all tour again you can show up to the LA show one of them oh for sure yeah or I'll fly out to Red Rocks also that'd be fucking awesome <laughs> Um, well, I have some more questions for you. Yeah, hit me. Esther wants to know, did your Korean culture and background have any impact on your career, as well as artistic and visual inspiration? I definitely take a lot of inspiration from, like, um, Korean or Asian art. Um, I think it's, like, a big part of music that's neglected is, like, the artwork and how you present the music itself. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do get a lot of inspiration from, like, Korean artists. Um, and, yeah, I don't think it's impacted my career too much, but I definitely, like, use that um, when it comes to, like, when I create music. Like, especially Wild Youth, um, I really wanted um, it to sound organic, so I was kind of, like, you know, researching, like, um, like Korean instruments or like Asian instruments, tribal stuff. Um, so I think it was, it was really cool to implement, you know, like my culture into the music that I'm making like nowadays. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it kind of connects to another question yeah. that Chang asked. What's it like being Asian in the EDM music industry? Do you face any hardship? I mean, I, I definitely think that um, Asians in like the American music landscape are underrepresented for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think personally for me, I haven't faced too many like hardships because of it. Um, I just think, you know, music is just a hard thing to get into. And I know just like from experience, like a lot of traditional Asian households, like especially like the parents, um, they try to like deter their kids from going into like anything like entertainment you know because you know like the risk of failure or like the chances of making it are so low yeah and i think i you know i can't speak on behalf of every you know asian person out there but for me personally like I was very resentful towards my, like, parents in the beginning for not, like, supporting what I wanted to do, which was music. Mm. Um, but, you know, as I grew older, I kind of realized that, like, you know, like, all it was was 
you know, my mom kind of being worried that I wouldn't make it and be able to support myself. And I think for a lot of Asian families, it's just like the parents want to know that you can support yourself and then you can support them like at the end of the Mm -hmm. day as well. So like it took a bit of time to like, you know, realize that. But, you know, like once my mom started seeing that I was, you know, I was able to support myself, could get my own place, could pay my own bills. Like she, you know, definitely became very supportive of that. So, <laughs> yeah. when I bought her her first Chanel bag, she was like, "Okay, I'm, I ain't gonna say shit anymore." <laughs> really? <laughs> She's like, "I'm so proud of you, son." <laughs> yeah, no, it was I a good feeling though. <laughs> I think it's always tough for parents. Like they want, I feel like they want to know that they did a good job. You know? For sure, for sure. But yeah. are they supportive now? Did they come to all your shows and stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, damn. Like, they were supposed to come to the uh, L.A. show. But Aww. sadly, that's not happening anymore. But <laughs> um, <laughs> no, they're very supportive. It's cute. Like, my mom has, like, a group chat with, like, her church friends. And she always, like, links. Plug- She's the plug. She plugs my music to them Aww. all the time. Yeah. And she, like, I remember when... Um, I got, like, my first billboard in Toronto, uh, like, Dundas Square, where I'm from. That was, like, such a crazy moment for me, but, like, my mom was, like, freaking her shit and just (laughs) sending pictures to everybody. It was so funny. I was like, Mom, I thought you wanted me to be a fucking doctor or something. But, yeah. (laughs) No, I feel like once they see the success and once you're able to support yourself, they, they have a change of heart, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about... And one couple more questions. Yeah. When did you decide that music is what you wanted to do? Actually, I talked to a friend about this like a few days ago, actually. Um, so when I when I graduated from university, I like didn't really have a direction, but I knew that like music was something I wanted to do. You know, I worked at like a social media agency for like a little bit, but I just like I was like, no, nah, this is definitely not for me. And then I got. Um, introduced to like a production company that kind of specializes in making music for you know commercials and like movie trailers and video games like whatever you need music for basically so I kind of worked there as like a freelance artist for a bit and Hmm. it was super fun like I was making money like making music you know and I was like oh this is such a cool like uh, cool little gig And then one of my friends that I made there, uh, Michelle, she was also there working as a freelance artist. And I just remember like going out to lunch one day and she was like, is this like really what you want to do? Like, you just want to be like Mm. making music for other people all the time. And then I don't know, that conversation just kind of hit home for me. And like that same week I quit and I was like, I just like, I have to like give this a shot because I'll never know if I like don't try you know totally yeah um and you know the first year was rough because you know i was just like living at my mom's house you know not making that much money um Mm -hmm. but i really do believe that like if you want to succeed in something like you have to give it like a hundred percent and like oh oh no sorry i don't know what happened (laughs) she's like i don't give a fuck about this conversation (laughs) i'm gonna leave now (laughs) peace It was disrupted. Oh, God, oh I'm no. sorry. It's all good. Bye, Somebody went home. Oh, well, all right. I guess that's the end of the interview because Ron just had enough of my shit. <laughs> well, I guess that's actually a decent place to wrap this up. Oh, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> no, you're totally good. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, Ron and I, um, we have the acoustic version of Alive coming out. Uh, July 29th. Uh, we're really excited to share it with you. Thanks for watching this uh, Animal Crossing interview, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.